the name Sancho. For Latin America, Sancho is a benchmark. Being number two in the world isn't easy. You constantly have to be innovative and push your boundaries. What Sancho attracts me the most is the menu coming from a diverse Peruvian ecosystem and spiced up by both Chef Martinez and his wife Pia's culinary flair. In the next few hours, we'll be eating food from different altitudes either from under the sea or up in the 3,000 meter mountain. After coming back from Cusco and pampered by the different landscape and culture traditions of Peru, I'm more intrigued to see what the chefs going to present their homeland through their food. Let's go. This is the first bite from Red Rocks, which is made of seaweed called sargassum. It's slightly sour, which is a perfect aperitif to refresh your taste bud. The clam has a slight sweetness from the sea. The taste reminds me of ceviche and the cream really offsets its sourness. The third one from the combo is my favorite. The flavor is complex and rich with a perfect balance of everything you get from a crab. The second dish explodes with textures and flavors as the sweet potato enhances the natural taste of the scallops while the Peruvian fruit tambo adds a tint of exotic into the dish. The third dish showcases three distinct varieties of corn. The cornbread was crispy and soft textures. The dipping sauce is rich and indulgent, satisfying all my cravings. Then a savory corn cake offers a denser bite. Now it's potatoes turn. There are 3,000 types of potatoes in Peru. Can you imagine? The dish proved me how humble potatoes can embody so many flavors and textures. Honestly, mind-blowing. We go back to seafood again. The perfectly cooked fish complemented by raw razor clam on top. The Vongoli broth though was a bit salty for my personal preferences. Then followed by Arapaima fish. It's a bit heartier, almost resembling meat in its texture and flavor. The leaf adds a refreshing herbal twist, just like icing on the cake. The foam was from a unique seaweed, was so intriguing. The combination of pickled squash and squid created a delightful umami flavor. I enjoyed every single bite. However, I found the sea urchin to be slightly overpowering. The green strings on top turned out to be another type of seaweed, adding a unique element to the dish. The octopus was perfectly cooked, tender, and pleasantly sweet. However, the overall dish leaned slightly towards the sour side of my taste. I was surprised by the black pearl-like sea plants. As soon as I bit into it, a burst of liquid exploded in my mouth. The beef accompanied by the creamy egg yolk was simply perfect. Soft, tender, and velvety. The paco fish really wowed me. Never would I have imagined pairing fish with watermelon. The addition of Lulo brought a natural sourness that complemented the slight sweetness lingering on the tip of my tongue. The last savory dish. I truly admired how the chef incorporated various textures into one dish. The use of a luco, a distinct type of potato, brought a refreshing crunchiness to the slightly heavier creation. The dessert base is a combination of agarabo and coconut powder. On top, the sprinkled iced macambo flakes and drizzled honey. This may seem as simple as adding honey to ice cream, but let me tell you, it's far more than that. The dish not only offers layers of sweetness, but also plays with the temperature, creating a contrast that dances in my mouth. Now let's talk about the last dessert, which truly showcases every aspect of cacao. During my trip, I discovered the beauty of cacao juice. It's like slightly sour yet complex version of guava juice. This dish utilizes cacao, demonstrating that it's not only about chocolate when it comes to this fruit. You can taste the essence of the shell, the seeds, and everything in between. From the ceramics to the plates, 
everything was carefully prepared to resonate with each dish. I was also fascinated by the little library they had at the back. It was incredible lens through which to explore and to learn about Peru. On the second floor, you find another restaurant called Koye, opened by Chef Pia, who is the wife of Chef Virgilio. It's like a dream come true, having two amazing restaurants in one location, especially when shared with the people you love. How would I describe this experience? I would say Central is worth my time and effort coming all the way to Lima just for the restaurant. I felt like every single dish were phenomenal. Like everything was so into detail, just from the show plate to um, the cutleries. I felt like the chef put so much heart and his soul into the restaurant. And you have, if I had to rate for this restaurant, it would be like 11 out of a 10. It was definitely a perfect ending for my trip in Lima, Peru. I was a bit ex um, like disappointed from the previous experience in Lima, but Sancho definitely lightened up the whole trip. And thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.